have get get our mouse going here so we can there we go. You're, you're in charge of that. I'm going to hand the mouse over to Marie. I'm Vicki Hoff, Education Coordinator, and uh, Marie Eldridge, Education Studio Coordinator, is joining us, joining me today for this presentation. We are really pleased to introduce some new feet and some of our existing feet. And one thing we really want to remind you about today is that this webinar is being recorded. All of our webinars are recorded. And then they're placed on our website under handyfiller.com and webinars. You can always go back, and this will be on later today, thanks to Jared. Uh, this will be on later today for you to go back and recap what we've seen. So I'll remind you that at the get end. So working with Handy Feet, we're way excited to show you all the new ones and the ones that we've already been enjoying. So first of all, we have the ruler foot, which uh, also comes with some toe foot and the couching feet, echo feet, the glide foot. So the uh, echo feet and the glide feet, those are a new thing in our library. And we're designs. trying to figure out which ones are our favorite, right? Well, each day, depending on the quilt that we do, we find a new yeah. favorite. Yeah. Of course, that's always the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> so the handy feet will work with all of our machines. They'll work with the Sweet 16, the Fusion, Infinity, HQ16, the Avonity. Avante. <laughs> so, you know, clear back when the HQ16 was our only machine and we had only one foot, we have made that so that anyone all the way back from the beginning to today gets to use all of our feet, which is a great thing for Happy Quilter. Yeah, because these are great. Everybody's going to want them. So the original foot that came with your machine had a long shank on it and it screwed up into the presser bar. Well, today we have a conversion mount, and you can see that in the two pictures, that conversion mount, and so you'll take that original foot out, you'll put that conversion mount in, and then every foot after that mounts to that. So we are yep. able to use, and who knows what new feet yeah. will come so up with. So it's just this. a quick change mm -hmm. so once you put that, that mount in. So there's some of the tools. That's but. the conversion kit. So if you don't have the, the machines that are coming out today come out with, uh, you would receive a, a machine with the ruler foot, which is the closed toe, and the open toe with that conversion mount already mounted in. If you don't have that, then you can purchase this conversion kit, and that gives you the mount plus the two feet. So that's for any one of our machines. Right. Yeah. Okay. So this shows the ruler foot, which is the foot that you're used to seeing that's closed all the way around. And the ruler will be, when you use a ruler, you get that quarter inch distance from the needle where you're stitching. So every line's like a quarter inch from the ruler when you're using this foot. Yep, right from the needle to the outside of the foot. This is also the foot that we've been using for free motion. It still works for that. It That's what everybody's for, really yeah. familiar with right now. Right. It's what you've been used to using. So you can do rulers or the free motion quilting. The open toe <laughs> foot. It's like a sandal. <laughs> it has the front open. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here's one that it's, it's directly open where you're stitching. So you can see closer. You can see in there where the stitches are going to lay down. I, when I do micro quilting, I put this foot on every time, every time, because I want to see right up. So here's the one for the infinity. And you can see there's a little bit of a different orientation there. But it's made so that it will also be open at the front. And that comes with the infinity. Yes. Yes. And all of our machines now are shipped with the open toe and the ruler. Because we need it out. OK, so why do we use an open toe foot? When we're on a domestic machine, you can see that foot is open to the front so that you can see what's happening as you're quilting or as you're sewing. So you can see. That's yeah, why exactly. we want it. So we can so see better. A regular foot with the feed dogs has that open toe. You, if you use a clean foot on your domestic machine, you can use that open toe, and then it hops. And so we have the open toe for a better view. Yeah. 
Yep, there's your micro quilting you were talking about when you're doing those little tiny stitches you want to see is the best of you you yeah, can get, absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But the open toe foot, if you want to go to the next slide, the open toe foot is can also be used for free motion quilting. So if you're standing up there, not down close where you're doing your micro quilting, and you can use the open toe foot for just your regular free motion quilting. Yep. It's not necessarily what you'd want to use for ruler work because it has that open in the front, so you wouldn't get the total quarter inch all the way around, but free motion quilting. Yeah, for a better view, that's, that's a good one to use. Oh, here we go, couching. So what does couching do, Marie? So couching is when you have a fiber that you lay down on top of your fabric and you um, couch it down or stitch it down with another thread. So either hand stitch it or by using a machine. And so this is just using your needle, but also our domestic machines have couching feet that thread, threads through a little hole and then it zigzags over the top of it. So it uses a thread to lay it across the top. So but how, does our, <laughs> how does our couching foot work? With our couching foot, that thread just goes right down the center of the fiber and that holds it down. So you just put the, there's a hole in the couching foot that your fiber goes through, and then you stitch along. And look what you can do with it. You can totally make new fabric by just couching that thread. Choose the correct hole that's in the couching feet, because there's three feet, and choose the correct size of the hole according to your fiber, and you just quilt. It's awesome. It just feeds through. You can kind of see in that picture on the left how it just kind of, comes underneath and then it just it feeds in and then stitches it down. Yeah, it's like magic. It just it is. You just sew. You so, just quilt. Yeah, so there's three different uh, feet for the different sizes that you know, lots of different fibers. The one that I've found that I don't use is one that's really nubby. It has lots of it's coarse and it's nubby because it doesn't want to pull through. Right, and you always want to use something that flows through easily. Yeah. So, so these you can you can couch over the top of something you've already quilted, or you can just make your own designs. And it quilts at the same time that it couches. And see the different fibers here. You can fill it in tight. You can this the fiber uh, on the left is a is a yarn that has little flags in it almost and it flows through there so easy. Yeah. So you always want to check it, make sure that you know it'll go through easily, but it works so great. Even works with, with the bro <laughs> stitcher, which is really fun. So there's some more pictures. We'll just keep scrolling through here and seeing these pictures of the cowboy boots and that is a pro stitcher design that Marie that you just you don't have to use everything with the couching foot, or you can come back in and uh, embellish with the couching yeah. foot. So the other one is one that Mary Beth Crapel, one of our educators, did. Just kind of that stained glass look, but that's just yarn going around it. Look how it yeah. enhances that quilting. And this is a, a, a little pouch or a purse that Diane Henry, another one of our educators, did. And it's totally, totally couched, so it looks like just new fiber, new our new fabric. Yeah. And it's yeah. so, so fun to do. You just create your designs and then make your little pouch with it. Oh, man, there's so many things you can do. Ah, uh, the echo feet. Okay. So they, these echo feet, what does echo do? You can create echoes around your quilting or straight line echoes or channel lock. Let's see what some pictures, some quilting that can be done using the echo feet. First off, as Marie indicated earlier, from the needle to the edge of the foot is one quarter inch. Well now with the echo feet, with the different colored rings around it, we can have a three eighths inch, a one half inch, and a three quarter inch from the needle to the edge of that foot. And these are permanently attached. It's not a ring that comes on or off. Yeah, that you change the whole foot, so you don't have to worry about that falling off. Or and you can put your ruler right it. up against it and get the different spacing that you need. And I love what happens. Let's 
show you a few. So look at the difference in the piano keys. You can get exactly that measurement in between there without marking it. You just use your ruler with your echo and, foot. You know, and if you want a wider echo, put on the different, you know, a wider spacing, put on a different echo foot. So just different pictures of quilting that you can use. Uh, you can quilt out with that. It creates channels. Then you can fill them in or leave them. Mm -hmm. So there's how you can get different spacing with that. Oh, they're fun. Now, one of the things that I thought, well, I thought, wait a minute, I have a ruler that has lines on it, and I can use that for different spacing. But sometimes it's easier just to put that ruler against the hopping foot and let the echo foot do the spacing for me, and I don't have to worry, which line did I use? Well, and the other thing is, is to get that echo, the exact measurement that you want, mm -hmm. and especially when you're doing like a circle, you know, yes. then you can, you know, then those so in. You, you have that accurate spacing between all the curving lines. Uh, yeah. So here's one that you've got a grid. And crosshatch. I want three quarter inch spacing in my crosshatch. Put that three quarter inch foot on. I don't have to think. Just there's the spacing for me. Is that what's We've had some fun with this. <laughs> <laughs> here's some, some different more. ways that you can see. Doing an echo. Piano keys are always good. Look how that, just a simple block, and then you put that mm -hmm. little echo on there with that. And then, you know, we talked about using the ruler foot, but using the echo foot to do the echoing around designs that are not straight lines, circular, you can use that as a guide, and you just use your eyes to eyeball it and get the, the echoing depending on your, your uh, foot that you put on. Look at that, just that little simple flower, and yet the quilting enhances yeah. it just by echoing around and around. And, you know, your fun chevron that's, that's really popular right now to get the different spacing, depending on the foot you use. Okay. Now, this is the one I've been waiting for because this is like my favorite foot. This today. might be it, huh? This yeah, is this it. is pretty. It. Because as I was quilting a quilt last week, we'll go to the next picture. As I was seeing this cute little quilt, it had this, it's a, it's a gathered like rickrack and trim that was, that my customer had put on the quilt. I thought, well, I want to quilt up against it, but the regular foot, I would have it bumps it and it doesn't you don't you can't get right up yeah, against yeah, it right. but this glide foot i got right up against it and you can totally see the stitching up against that i didn't have to stitch right down the center i wanted to do just right up against it it just glided is that a word <laughs> <laughs> right over the top yeah so then you can get your quilting and that's what really makes that uh pop so Think of the different embellishments. Oh. Rick rack that you can. And that big fat rick rack. Rick rack. That's really and sometimes popular. you get it and the quilt's already done and has it on and you're mm -hmm. like, now what? Yeah. Put this foot on and, and go right up against it or over the top of it. So yeah. you put, holds that down and laces. Put lace on your quilt, different embellishments. I would not advise buttons or that. You want to wait till the end after it's all quilted. But different embellishments with lace and trims that you can glide over it and quilt it down. Kind of gives you an idea of uh -huh. new quilts uh -huh. you want to make, right? Yes. Yeah. Try some things. So here's some Rick Rack that they, the customer placed the Rick Rack right along the seams, but you want to, then you want to quilt a pattern in it, and with the glide foot, you get right up as close as you want. This makes me think of the rack quilt. Oh, yes. You know, and don't you think if you did a rack quilt like that, you could just put it on the frame and... Yeah, do some fun yeah. designs. You could exactly. go between squares with that. Yeah. And raw edge applique, because a lot of people like to do that raw edge and it just glides over the top of it. Yeah, it doesn't grab it. Oh. And yo yo's. I thought that was just fun to. Yeah, because you try can get out. in close. Mm -hmm. That's the thing with the, you know, that makes this so ideal. And, you mm -hmm. know, any type of embellishment that you add things to and you can, like you say, get in close yeah, yeah. or quilt or, over the top of all of it without flapping 
some of those leaves off. Yeah. Now, this is one of the biggest reasons I think we like this is because Marie likes to quilt, and we both do to an extent, I do, but Marie likes to quilt with two layers of batting, a wool and 80-20. Um, and when you're doing that plumb line across the top, or if you're using a polyester batting, you can't do a plumb line because your regular foot, your ruler foot, gets caught in it. That's but, oh man, this makes it so easy to just glide along the top of there, lay that down. And it doesn't get caught up and create yeah, issues. That's so when you're good. doing edge to edge quilt. Okay, now we're gonna, we've got a couple of videos. Oh, show. yes, but so but on this, when you're doing edge to edge quilting and you don't want to oh, yeah. lap over the oh, edges yeah. as you're around the outside. So let's show you some videos today on how to use these feet and just some different tips. And we've hired some professionals for these videos. That's right, so. that's right. Paid them big bucks for this. <laughs> Hi, I'm Marie Eldridge, I'm a studio educator, and I'd like to show you the couching feet and some fun things that you can do with them. So first of all, we have three different sizes, and I'm going to use the largest one, and there is a hole in the center of it that you can match the size of your fiber that you're using to the size of the hole. So I'm just going to attach this so you need to have the conversion kit already installed on your machine and then this just installs really quick with an Allen wrench. Now that I have the foot attached, let's talk about how to get the yarn through that little tiny hole. First of all, I'm going to bring up my bobbin thread. And you can see I have two different colors, so you can tell one's the bobbin thread, and the top thread is threaded through the hopping foot through the couching hole. So I'm going to lay my yarn or the fiber across my hopping foot, so it's just right there between the hopping foot and the needle inside the thread. So I'm just going to push that around the side of that so it grabs both sides so it's around the thread. I've just kind of lassoed that. I'm going to hold that and then just make a stitch and as I pull on the machine and move it away, both threads of the couching will slide through there. Now if you have a hard time getting it to go through, it might be too thick for the couching foot that you've chosen. So now that it's there, you can just do a little tacking stitch to put it in place. Okay, have that tacked down, so now we'll go change our stitch length. I've changed my stitch length, now we're at 10 stitches per inch. I'm just going to puddle my uh, yarn so that it just feeds through. You don't want to stretch it or pull on it, just let it lay there, and I'm just going to stitch and it'll go across and stitch down. Okay, when you start to get that, you can tell that it was pulling on the yarn, that the yarn wasn't puddled enough there. You want it to be really relaxed so it'll go through there and it'll just stitch. So, so let's look at some different fibers that you can use and some ways that you can use this on a quilt. This is just the plain black yarn that we use to do that and there are a lot of different kinds of yarns and fibers that you can use. This is a really fun gold that really looks great on black. I'll show you what that looks like. This is just a variegated yarn. Look how pretty that turns out. This is another variegated one. Now this one was freehand. This one was done with a pro stitcher. And all you have to do is get your yarn in and your design and it'll just stitch it down for you. Here's one with cowboy boots that the whole quilt was done with couching and you can just, it's just the same as using yarn to tie your quilts. You can wash that and it'll work up just fine. Here's some other, look how nice that is just to put a little accent around the outside of the quilt to go around your designs, how they make it kind of gives another element to it, a little pop to the design to your quilt. 
Okay, and here's one that you can see just going around the star flower, how that accents each of those colors and separates it, kind of makes it, just gives that different look to it. There are three different sizes of couching feet, so there are a lot of different fibers that you can use to enhance your quilts. You could do pillows, wall hangings, think of all the things that you can use it for. So enjoy, have fun with the couching feet. Hi, I'm Marie Eldridge, I'm a studio educator and I am excited to show you the new glide foot and how to attach it and especially all the fun things you can do with it. So first of all, we'll just put it on here. I've already taken my other foot off. So I'm just going to lift that needle bar so it'll slide on just like the other one foot did. You use your Allen wrench. There we go, just like that we have it on. One of the fun things that you can do with this is going to be to put my um, plumb line across this batting. This is wool batting that's a little thicker. So we'll just get this set up and show you how that works. I'm going to show you how to use the glide foot to do a plumb line. What I have here is a layer of wool and a layer of 80-20. So a lot of times when you're doing that, your foot can get caught. And think about when you have like polyester batting, how sometimes your foot gets caught. It's really hard to just do a plumb line with that. And we always want to start with a straight line to line our fabric up with to start our quilt square. So I've already pulled up my bottom thread. I've set this uh, to a basting stitch. You just pull up your thread just like through the same through a hopping foot. So I'm just going to go across here. You can see how that foot just glides across the top of there, goes right across the top of the batting. Okay, let's talk about some fun things and some challenging things with that we can use this glide foot for. So first the fun thing, look at this big huge rick rack. You can get this and that little hole in there, you can line up your needle so you are right on the edge of that rick rack. You can go right along the edge of it. See how it just holds it down, lays it flat. You can stitch right along the edge of there. You can also stitch right on the rick rack. So another thing that might be a little bit of a challenge is we're doing and seeing a lot of antique quilts. This is one that was hand stitched. So applique and hand stitching, that will just go along the edge of there. You don't have to worry about it grabbing the edge or catching there. So this is another great way to use it. All right, here's one that's kind of one of those challenges. See how they've come across here and there's four different seams that meet there. Normally, if you came across here with your hopping foot, you're gonna push that fabric across and then you're not gonna get the stitching straight. But with the glide foot, it's just gonna glide across there. You can stitch whichever way you want. So again, this is one of those antique quilts that's uh, hand stitched and this would be awesome for that. How about minky? Layers of minky, that gets really thick. So you can use the glide foot for that, not have to worry about it. This is one of those quilts that you really are scared when you get it from your friend. And you can see right here, can you see how that little fold, that little tuck in the fabric? So you know going into it that you're going to have piecing problems. You can either fix that or you can just glide across there. But you don't have to worry about grabbing that with the hopping foot. Okay, so another fun thing. You can see here that this vine was put down and then I used the pro stitcher and did the background edge to edge right over the top of it. So you can use the hopping, use the glide foot and just go across that and you're not grabbing it all. Then you can come back in and put your um, raw edge applique on there. You could even use it for that. Here's another one that there's just like a little channel that goes across there. And again, that glide foot's just gonna go across there. 
There are a lot of fun things you can use this glide foot for. We're still discovering some and we're sure you will too. I hope you have fun with it. Hi, I'm Vicki Hoth from Handy Quilter. Now I've shown you how to use the echo feet or what the echo feet can do, but I have a new thing for you to learn today using the echo feet. So let's come on in here, get real close, and you can see what I've got. I have uh, appliqued this little flower around here, and then I use my regular hopping foot, and with a ruler, a straight line ruler, I use that to help me guide around this circle here or this curve here. Then this time, I t this curve, I took the ruler away and just did it free motion. I kind of flat lined a little bit there, but then this one, I used the curved, the circle ruler to help. And I struggled a, li with, a little bit with that. I found that I actually liked the straight line ruler. And I'm gonna show you, we're gonna do one more. I actually like using the straight line that, because it's a nice guide. So I'm gonna just let it guide me and as I go around, I'm going to stop and move my hand around. And I can just move that ruler and it guides me around there. Okay? So that was, I like that. But I'm going to go ahead and clip my thread. And we're going to change the foot out. We're going to put our echo foot on because I've got, this is a quarter inch. Let's move up to a little bit bigger. This is a 3 8 inch echo foot. Screw that in there tight. Okay, now we'll just see a little bit of difference because obviously there is some difference in the echo that I'm going to get. So I'm going to put my, my ruler right up against there, drop my needle down. So that's how far out that's going to be. Then with my ruler, I can guide that and get a wider echo. Now let's try it without a ruler and see how easy it is. Move our hopping feet away there. Let's cl clip some threads there so that we don't get caught up. And you can see, a little shaky here. Take some practice to get this. We're going to come back to there. Now, let's take this thread or this hopping foot off. Let's just go with our next size. So I have two other sizes, a half inch and a three quarter inch. I'm going to actually go here, use this half inch one, put that on, and you can see the difference in the size of the echoing. So I'm going to actually echo around that, we'll move everything aside, start here, and I can use a ruler, kind of wiggly there, I can use this ruler template there to go in there. Look at how awesome that is. Let's get that thread out of the way. Clip some threads. Again with my circle. Keeps me really stable. So anytime you're doing echoing around embroidery, or around applique, you can change your size of echoing by changing the hopping foot and then using a ruler as a guide to get you where you need to go. Isn't that fun? Have some fun with these new echo feet. There's the three different sizes.
have your blue, your pink, and your yellow. Three eighths, one half, and three quarters. Have fun! Okay, we're back <laughs> in live, live person. <clears throat> what do you think? I love them. I want them all. <laughs> <laughs> we actually have a quilt this afternoon to put on. We're going to use some feet. Well, the glide foot we just used on that antique quilt, that was, and it was in the studio, and it was such, I mean, we used it for everything. We used it with the cross stitch. We never did we take did, it off. Yeah, everything. So I don't know. I think we didn't you could do use ruler it. work with that. I wouldn't recommend this. The glide yeah, foot would work for ruler. But a uh, question that has come up is when, uh, how far back have we been selling the machine with the conversion kit? And it, it's around 2014, in the spring of 2014, that most of our, that the Avante came out with it. The Fusion was a little later. But today, all of our machines come out with that conversion uh, mount and with the two feet. But but again, like I say, they can all have it. Every yeah, machine can have yeah, it. It's real easy. And so if you don't have the conversion kit, you can purchase that from your uh, sales, your retailer, or on our website. And it is available today on our website for $99.5. And that will give you that mount and those two feet, and that's good forever. And then the Handy Feet Couching Kit is also available now. That's with the three different feet, and you can just put those on, quick change with the uh, conversion kit. So you have to have the conversion kit to, in, use, to use the couching. To use any of our Handy Feet. Go for it. The Echo Feet. Oh, you're going to save the glide for you. <laughs> The Echo Feet. Look, at, I love the colors. I love these. I love doing different sizes, so I'm way excited to have these available. August 3rd, you can get these. You'll be able to find them on our website today. You can go in there and see it later this afternoon. That will be up, so you can see that. You can purchase this through your retailer or on our website, but they're not, like we say, they're not available until August 3rd. And then the Glide Foot. And then the Glide <laughs> How did you ever do without it? I, I don't know. It's just a nice foot. And it, again, is available August the 3rd. And you can pre-order both of these today. Go back. What? Go back. We can pre-order these two feet, even though they're, they're not available. They could be pre-ordered through your retailer or on our website. And uh, the glide foot is $49.95. Now we're going. Okay. So visit your local hand filter retailer to pre-order the new Handy Feet. And you can learn more about them. We'll have these videos online. There are more videos about this, about um, more things about using the Echo Feet and how to do channel locks and different spacing with that. And again, a big reminder to everyone, <laughs> all of our webinars are recorded. They will be available this afternoon, uh, later this afternoon ready to uh, for you to watch in and every one of our webinars are available online yes okay let's go get it off I think so we just want to remind everybody oh. thank you for joining us today we had <laughs> we always have fun <laughs> we are so in love with these new feet it's just such a, a fun thing to try out different I went on I went online and just started looking at quilts and thinking Oh, look what I could do with that glide foot. Oh, look what I could do with the echo feet. So there's so many possibilities for every one of our feet on yeah, using this. Yeah. The couching. Oh, the difference they make in the quilt, what they add to the quilt, and yeah. make our job easier, make us look really good. So yeah, it makes the quilt look really good. That's why we're excited to share them with you. So, so thanks for joining us today. And remember, everything's recorded, and it will be on our website forever. And you can go back and see, see webinars from the past couple of years, and our next education webinar will be offered on August 13th. So join us again. We'll, we're going to surprise topic. you. <laughs> we have a fun new topic. See you later.